Hello there, welcome to Properly Productions. My name is John Murphy, and I loves me some Star Wars. Out of all the iconic weapons in film, I think the lightsaber is just the absolute best. It's futuristic, but classic at the same time, and it makes those awesome sounds. <laughs> But the really great thing is that it's not complicated or expensive to make one for your short films. There's hundreds of YouTube videos that range from beginner to advanced on how to make your own lightsaber hilt. But that's not what I'm going to show you. Today is about the four ways to get the lightsaber blade. Ready, set, go. The first method is the oldest and cheapest known as rotoscoping which can be done in just about any software. I'll be using HitFilm Pro for this but you can also do this in the free version. First create a white plane above your footage, lower the opacity so you can see the bottom layer, then click the freehand mask tool and draw around the stick. Now click the keyframe icon next to mask path and start animating the mask shape frame by frame. Once the mask is fully animated, we can bring the opacity back up and add the neon glow effect to the plane. I'm going to use two copies of the neon glow effect to give it that classic look. Then I'm going to click on motion blur to the plane and to show you what it does, here's with motion blur and without. Of course, you can leave it off to get this kind of pseudo flicker effect like it's from the original trilogy. It's up to you. Now the downside to this method is that it's very time consuming, so if you're on a tight deadline or just don't have the patience, then you'll probably not want to use this. The next method is a step up from rotoscoping, less time consuming, and can also be done right out of the free software. Create a black plane this time and drop in the lightning effect. Set the blend mode to add before dropping the twitch, wave, and trunk scales to zero, then drag the start and end points to your reference stick and adjust the width so that it's covered. Now enable keyframes and move the start and end points about every two to four frames. You may have to fine tune the animation points depending how much the saber moves in between them, but once that's done, I'll use the built-in glow settings for the lightning bolt and change it to red. Now the problem with this is that you're working with a solid white line, so it's not going to cover up the blur from your reference stick and turning on the layer's motion blur doesn't seem to help. They're not my young Padawans. You can still add in motion blur from the effects list and set the mode to the comp settings. Now seeing the results, it definitely has a unique look which is not bad if I'm being honest. Sort of has that thin stick look from the Clone Wars and Rebel series. Plus, this gives you something for the activation shot. The first two methods are really great for filmmakers that are strapped for cash. The next two require payment to use them, but they are worth it in the end, trust me. The third one uses the light sword effect that is exclusive to HitFilm, which comes built into the Pro version, but you can purchase it in the Neon Lights pack in the Express Store if you are using the free version. I'll make a black plane on top of the footage and drop in the two point light sword ultra effect, because it sounds awesome, and change the blend mode to add. Again, set the position points to the start and end of the reference stick, and you can either leave the color at the default or use a different one. I'll use green for this. Now just like the lightning method, turn on keyframes and scrub through your timeline every two to four frames and change the position points. You'll be able to see the software doing its work of adding in motion of the swings between points. When that's over, make any adjustments you want to dial in the look you want and there we go. It's that easy to use and with the exception of masking, the whole thing only took me about five minutes and after using the first method then moving on to this one, you know, I was all like... <laughs> And now the fourth and final method uses the free Saber plugin from Video Copilot. Yes, you heard me right. Okay, dramatics aside, this powerful little plugin works exactly like the light sword effect. So to save time, I'll just set the blend mode to add, copy my position keyframes, paste them to the beginning of the layer, and then fine tune the glow to make it less blown out. So if you're new to hit film or VFX in general, you're probably wondering, why did I make such a big deal about this one? Why? Yeah because you can do a lot more than just lightsaber effects with this. Along with all the amazing presets, the plugin can be applied to masks and even text for some interesting motion graphics, and you can customize everything to really dial in the look you want. 
Andrew Kramer did an amazing in-depth tutorial that still holds up today on how to use it. It's for After Effects, but it can also be applied to hit film. Now there is a downside. While the plugin is free to download, it's only compatible with HitFilm Pro, which means if you want to use it, you'll have to spend some cash and that may disappoint those of you who are starting out, but you do still have the other three ways that can be done inside HitFilm Express. As you saw, each method gives a different look to the blade, which was honestly not something I was expecting when making this, and there's not one I prefer over the other. Just like how the hilt is unique to a character, the blade itself can be unique as well. So go crazy with these effects, stack a lightning bolt on top of a light sword, mess around with the glow settings, use one of the saber presets on top of a rotoscope blade. Just be creative. That's what makes this so much fun. But now my work here is done. If there's an effect you would like to see, you can leave a comment below or send me a message right here. And I'll see you next month on Properly Productions. <laughs>